when firms become dominant, they can become too big to care. That's FTC Chair Lena Kahn at the Wall Street Journal CEO Council. She's answering a question about the Taylor Swift Ticketmaster fiasco, a situation that's renewed calls to undo its decade-old merger with Live Nation, which has plagued Washington, D.C. and the music industry for years. Tickets to Swift's first tour in five years went on sale to verified fans and then to Capital One cardholders. But in both cases, a glitchy system kept fans from securing tickets. Once they got into the system, they'd click on tickets that would disappear. They'd get kicked out. They'd get error messages. Which prompted furious fans to take to the internet. What do you mean something went wrong? I'm not doing this today, Ticketmaster. And lawmakers to call for scrutiny. There's no other choice. That's why we are pushing the Justice Department to look at this. Before tickets could open to the public, Ticketmaster canceled the sale. So how did Ticketmaster reach the point where lawmakers and fans are calling for scrutiny? Fan testimonies, congressional hearings, as well as court documents tell the story. Now, Taylor Swift fans are suing Ticketmaster over claims that the ticketing giant violated antitrust laws. And some lawmakers are even calling it a monopoly. To understand why, we have to go back. The timeline starts here, in 2009, when two of the largest companies in the live event space sought to join together. Will the combined company be tempted to divert tickets to the resale market at inflated prices because there are now no competitors to keep this behavior in check? Live Nation CEO Michael Rapino and then CEO of Ticketmaster Irving Azoff pled their case in front of the Judiciary Subcommittee on Antitrust. It was 2009, so this is right in the thick of the financial crisis. Concert promotion is a really, really tough margin business, whereas ticketing, on the other hand, is a very high margin business. This financial need was one of the main talking points at the time for why the two required a merger. I have two choices. I can hope the economy gets better, or I can seek a more proactive approach to protect our employees, reward our shareholders, and better service artists and fans. Of course, the committee also heard the opposing case. Antitrust law attorney David A. Balto, as well as some music promoters, each testified against the merger. From a straightforward horizontal concern, this merger is anti-competitive. The fear was that this would create this behemoth that would kind of have a stranglehold on the music business. That's because Ticketmaster was already the dominant ticketing provider, while Live Nation was the largest promoter of live shows. Blending the two would mean the company would have a hand and pocketbook in nearly every step of the live event business. When you have that type of integration, it can create certain types of conflicts of interest. At the time, there was a concern that um, Ticketmaster might use its, its position to tie those things together and to say, well, in order to have access to this venue, you actually have to use our ticketing site. The Department of Justice ultimately allowed the merger after coming to an agreement with the companies through what is known as a consent decree. Under this settlement, it says that Live Nation is not allowed to strong arm venues into using Ticketmaster. But almost 10 years later, reports broke that the DOJ was preparing legal action for that very reason. According to this report, it believes it violated a merger settlement by trying to coerce concert venues into using Ticketmaster. Without Live Nation admitting any wrongdoing, a new settlement with D the Department of Justice was reached. I think a lot of people viewed it as sort of a slap on the wrist. Then, as the Biden administration took office, lawmakers like U.S. Representative Bill Pascrell voiced hope for stricter antitrust laws. In a letter to the admin, Pascrell, along with several other Democrats, said the evidence of strangled competition is overwhelming and called on the admin to revisit the merger. We've seen these agencies, the DOJ and the FDC, really be encouraged to take a more critical eye toward these big mergers. As part of a broader effort, President Biden signed an executive order last year aimed at promoting competition in the American economy. Let me be very clear. Capitalism without competition isn't capitalism. It's exploitation. But that fall, as live events began revitalizing from the COVID-19 halt, issues with Ticketmaster's site continued to mount. Similar problems to Swift's Eras tour happened last year with a BTS concert and Olivia Rodrigo's too. Then in December this year, Ticketmaster apologized again, this time for a Bad Bunny ticket fiasco in Mexico City. In the current live event market, it's not uncommon for a ticketing site to get overwhelmed with high volume. But this reached an entirely new scale with Taylor Swift. For the first day of pre-sales, they sold over 2 million tickets to her show, which is the most tickets sold for any single artist in a single day in Ticketmaster history. Ticketmaster sold tickets to all but five of her 52 stadium shows. The ones at the State Farm Stadium and the AT&T Stadium were sold through SeatGeek. 
That's because of a business practice known as exclusive ticketing contracts. In that case, Ticketmaster goes to venues and inks an exclusive deal, which means anything that comes through this stadium or arena is going to be sold through Ticketmaster. In an interview with CNBC, Liberty CEO and Live Nation chairman Greg Maffei credited the company's stellar services for its market share. Our competitor, who is the promoter for Taylor Swift, chose to use us because we are, the, in reality, the largest and most effective ticket seller in the world. Even our competitors want to come on our platform. To which Taylor Swift's promoter AEG rebuted. And they said, no, we actually didn't have a choice. She's the biggest artist in the world. She's going to tour in stadiums. And those stadiums are locked up in exclusive contracts with Ticketmaster. Live Nation has said it didn't engage in behavior that warranted litigation. The company added that the ticketing industry is more competitive than ever. It's pointed to some of the deals that it's lost in venues to competing services. And it says that it continues to innovate and make its technology better. The Justice Department declined to comment. While calls build for the DOJ to undo the deal, many industry experts wonder if reversing the merge would solve the issue. Ticketmaster would still be the dominant player in the ticketing industry. It would still control some 70 to 80 percent of the market, and it would still have these exclusive ticketing contracts with the venues. But undoing the merge isn't the only option at the DOJ's disposal. They can also do investigations into whether current business practices are unlawful under separate laws. The legal actions taken against Ticketmaster and Live Nation are pending. In the meantime, Taylor Swift fans are scavenging resale sites, still hoping to secure tickets.